we're going to go out to the internet and go to the Apple website to get Apple iTunes, which also comes with QuickTime. QuickTime is, well, I, I'll say has become a lot like um, Adobe Flash in that, um, let's just jump out here, iTunes. So QuickTime has become a lot like Adobe Flash in that you need it for a lot of video content that would be on websites if they're using the QuickTime uh, format for video. And that comes with iTunes when you download iTunes. So you'll see when you go to apple.com forward slash iTunes or if you click on their iTunes link on their website, you'll see a download option over here in a small button or also here it is. And the iTunes program then is like a portal that allows you to get to a lot of content that Apple has made available only through iTunes. Some of the content's free. It's you know music, books, videos, all kinds of stuff. Um, I'll go ahead and click Save. And if you've been following these videos along, you know I have a computer support folder out here with a software folder in it. And we'll just go ahead and type in Apple iTunes. And we'll put the iTunes installation file in there. Over the years, iTunes has changed um, in size. It's gotten to be a pretty big program and looks like uh, right now it's about 66.7 megabytes, which is still pretty sizable, but I, I think it's possibly smaller than it had been in the past. And you'll notice once this software is installed, there will be some other software that's visible in the Windows control panel area under the Add Remove Programs. Um, we should find QuickTime there. We should also find in the Start menu a, an icon that allows us to update Apple software. There are some Apple programs like Safari for Windows, iTunes for Windows, and uh, the iCloud, which has come now, that make Apple increasingly accessible and available to Windows users. So now that that file has been downloaded, in just a couple of seconds here, we'll have an option to open the folder where it went. Here we go, if we want to open the folder, or I'm just going to choose Run. Now there's some things that um, I'm going to go ahead and recommend here for the iTunes installation that are different than the default settings possibly. So you normally can install a program and accept the defaults, but in this case some of the things I'm going to suggest might be different. Um, what's showing up here looks good. Click Install. See, it's going pretty quick here. If I thought this was going to take a long time, I'd go ahead and pause the video, but since it's going pretty smoothly, I'll go ahead and just let it run. Um, because iTunes is all about you know providing multimedia content, that is why the QuickTime player is included with it. In the past, Apple had QuickTime 7, which had a basic version and then a pro version. The pro version allowed you to do more kind of video production. In version 10, there's just basically version 10 and there's no you know pro version of that. Some of the advanced features that used to be in 7, like exporting in different file formats, that's been really simplified in version 10. And you can see here displayed the uh, multiple scalable 
um, platforms that Apple offers, the smaller iPod there, and uh, has a touch screen, and then the iPod Touch, old style iPod, iPad, and other devices that all interface with iTunes. Once iTunes is installed, you'll find every uh, maybe three to six months there might be a new update to it. And you'll be notified of that through the Apple software update application. And it's a good idea to go ahead and keep updated with the latest versions of Apple software. Since this is dragging on a little bit, I'll go ahead and press pause and come back when we're at the next step. So here you can see iTunes finished installing. I'm going to click Finish. So after confirming the completed install of iTunes, the next step is uh, that iTunes launches. You can agree to the license agreement. And I'm going to go ahead and close out of the Safari or the Internet Explorer window here. And um, if you notice down here, the hard drive light is almost solid as it's trying to load iTunes for the first time. I'll go ahead and maximize here, and one thing you may want to take a look at with iTunes, um, once you've seen the welcome message, you can close that out, is to go into the Edit menu and then to Preferences. So from Edit and Preferences, you can take a look at the Import Settings, which you'll see here. And you'll notice that it's set to um, the setting of AAC encoder instead of MP3. AAC encoder is actually quite good. You'll notice it's the equivalent of iTunes Plus. But if you wanted to make sure that your files are in something a little more compatible, you could choose MP3 here. For now, I'll leave it as AAC encoder. I just wanted to point that out. Otherwise, um, iTunes is basically set up for, uh, for basic use. Along with that iTunes install, though, I wanted to show you here in the Start menu now, if we go to All Programs, you'll see that um, Apple Software Update is listed here. It was not listed before. And then also, if we go to the Start menu and choose the Control Panel, and once Control Panel loads, click on Add Remove Programs. In the list, you'll see some other Apple software that got installed as part of the iTunes installation. So we see um, Apple Application Support, Apple Mobile Device Support, Apple Software Update. iTunes is listed here. And um, that's, that's basically it for right now. And I'm going to go ahead and end this segment of the uh, series and come back again later.